What the hell are you doing up here in Flagpole? Driving my Toyota. There you go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I grew up camping. Um, we'd always go out to like, the Delaware River as a kid and stuff. And you know, there's tents and all that. It's funny how I got into this. Like I had a, I had a Camry 2013 and like I just, I liked the reliability of it and all. But I was uh, traveling all the time. I had like a big dog and it's like I need something bigger. So I wanted a big Camry. Find myself looking at Forerunners. Hertz ends up, it was what? A month, two after COVID started, Hertz put their whole uh, lot on sale. So it was like everything was on sale. So I'm like, look, I'm like, why are these so cheap? Oh, the whole lot's on sale. Picked it up for a great price. I got the truck about two years ago. Been building it for a year and a half, like actually building it. But it's crazy, like the stuff it's brought me to do, the people I've met through it, someone I totally didn't see, but it's great. I, I love it. Favorite trip had to be going out west to Moab. We stopped in Colorado on our way there, and that was like really cool. So right now I got 37 inch uh, Yokohama Geolanders, uh, 12 and a half on some 17 inch uh, Relation Race Wheel uh, B-Lux R7s, uh, and they're awesome. My first lift ever, like I said, I wasn't really into off-road yet. I did a rough country spacer lift, and that rode terribly. Got a nice deal on the Dobbinson's uh, MRA suspension it's just been a world of difference being able to adjust it so much and i mean i got a little more lift out of it that definitely helped with fitting the tires um also put a body lift on it just a one inch just to uh give me a little more clearance i just finished dialing it in and it's been about a year so but it's it's perfect now i'd say i've gone through quite a few actuators so the sr5s have two actuators they have one in the transfer case and one in the front diff and I've gone through three transfer case ones and two front diff, the ADD actuators. My new thing that I figured out works really well is when I get them, before I install them, I just flex seal every crack and crevice of them and install them. And so far, since I've done that, they've been fine. Yeah, my cold air intake, they told me it wasn't compatible with the snorkel. So I just got some like, you know, plumbing from uh, Home Depot. Put some of that together, flex seal. I mean, it's a flex seal monster under there, but there's no water getting in. No, that's a lot of damage. So the front bumper actually came up on like crazy good deal. Uh, it's a road armor front bumper. They're running a sale. It was either 50% off or 30% off in a free 12K winch. 480 bucks. I got powder coated bumper shipped to me with a 12K winch. And then I traded the uh, free 12K winch for the rigged swing out. So I eventually, I pretty much got the front and rear taken care of with just that one purchase. I was apprehensive in getting it, you know, cause you lose clearances and that, but for how much I've beaten it, it should be broken. I started with the initial two light bars that are in the grill. My ditch lights, I got Vivid Lumen spots out front in the middle. And then I got the Dio Dynamic uh, Maxes. They shoot out to the side. And then I got, yeah, diode dynamic uh, maxes as fog lights with the little Aiden James custom bezels and uh, Alpha Rex headlights with the last fit switchbacks in them. The roof racks and Alpha Foxtrot designs roof rack. Jack of all trades overland tent. Um, he makes them locally in Virginia. So it's a Dobinson snorkel um, and I have that snorkel upgrade, uh, the pre-cleaner on there, the Cyclone. The interior mainly I just did sound system. I did sound deadening and uh, like heat insulation. So I did all that. The uh, rubber kill mats and then the foam on top. I did replace the head unit with a T10 head unit. So I have the car play and all that. Last fit floor mats, I, I had uh, WeatherTechs previously and honestly they fit terribly. I switched to the last fit mats and they've been awesome. And they're also so much easier to clean because they're not all like granulated like the WeatherTechs were. You don't have to scrub them. You can just blast them out and they're cleaned up. I have an Iceco fridge, the uh, VL60 Dual. So it's a dual zone, uh, 60 liter. I don't have a dual battery setup. I just have an AGM uh, Deep Cycle, uh, the Odyssey battery, and it's been great. I just have the fridge uh, right on it, just runs off it. Once the fridge is cool, it barely starts sipping on the battery. So it's, it's good for days. I mean, I've never run out of the battery. It has an auto cutoff and stuff as well. If you're gonna modify it, the best one to get is a TRD off-road or the off-road premium. So the premium models, it's just like a few extra little creature comforts, like leather seats and whatnot. The TRD off-roads are the best, just because if you're gonna take off the suspension anyway, paying for the pro suspension is just useless. It's really cool how it's just turned into such a big thing. When I 
was really just buying a, a bigger car. I've put in so much of my own time and energy, like this thing's for life. Like I'll be beating this thing on the trail, all sorts of dents in a roll cage in 20 years, you know? That, that's the goal of this truck. I have an Instagram uh, at Milkwagon. Um, feel free to DM me there. We'll take any sort of build questions, specific questions, whatever. It was funny, like, before I named it the Milkwagon, you know, it was just like the truck, but now it's like so much has come with that. I mean, people call me milk, milky, you know, just weird stuff. I don't like that, but I, I like how there's some recognition to it and stuff. It's, it's a thing, you know. Yeah. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video, it helps us out a lot. Also, if you haven't seen our FJ80 build that we're putting a CTSV supercharged 600 horsepower motor into, uh, you can watch that here. See you on the next one.